After a well-deserved break, the boys are straight back into it. This week, Jesse's refurbishing the turret traverse mechanism, Daryl's reassembling the gun, and together, they're pulling out the old turret ring. Hi, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour, and welcome to Workshop Wednesday. Okay. What do we got here, Jesse? So this is the uh, turret winder for the grant project that we're doing. It's not in the best condition. I've pulled the, the handle for the winder off. This cover plate I've loosened, you can actually see how it all works, all the internals. I've got to completely strip it and clean all the internals out, make sure they all work and then re-grease it all. You can see how that works. And so there, this traverses the turret. Yeah, yeah. This handle here has a shaft that goes up through it, which is this gear here. So as I turn that handle, it turns that gear, which turns this internal gear inside. On the other side of it, when I pull this off, you'll actually see there's another gear on the other side, which goes actually into the housing, which turns another gear. So turning the, the turret manually, it's not a strenuous task. So that moves that. And if you look on the inside here, I don't know if it's very good light. That's all right, it's all good. You can see it goes onto this gear here. Wow. So when you turn that one, it turns this one, which then turns this one up here and goes across and reduces it even more. Which, if I pull this cover plate off, there will be another huge gear oh. in here, which then goes down to the shaft, which then goes onto this, which goes onto the teeth of our turret. Wow, so, so many. So many, but yeah, it, it's worth it because you can turn it manually by hand quite easily. I've just got to make sure that there's no, you know, grime or crap or anything on the inside that will bind up any of the gears and obviously re-grease it, you know, make it look all brand new. Oh, this will be Imperial, why not? I don't know. Yeah, I reckon it's going to be Imperial. This is extremely strange. What's happening? Oh, it's um, it's not the size of any of my um, Allen keys. I'll have to grab my torque set. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh wow. This is why we wanted to pull it apart. Just to clean all this up. Get it all out. Yeah, so you can kind of see. So before this side is so that's the winder, which has two gears which go through it, and then a gear that comes across, which turns this bottom gear, which is a shaft going up, which turns this one, and which then in turn turns this one which goes <laughs> down onto another shaft which turns the actual teeth on that so that's what spins the turret around makes it so easy because you've got all these reduction gears and everything i had to clean all the inside out um, i think i used kero first then i used degreaser went through it cleaned it all out it looks perfect like there's nothing wrong with it it was just old you know grease with grime and and you know stuff that we don't want in there so we've had to clean it out thoroughly so I've pulled it apart cleaned it out and then I've reassembled it I've cleaned the outside wire wheeled uh, wire wheeled it and then I went around with the orbital sander orbital sander went around with the scraper thoroughly cleaned it and then now I've primed it so now we're just going to put it back together we'll pack it with grease and then reassemble it and then once it's all reassembled we'll uh, go around tape up where we've got to tape up again and then paint him white and then it's good to go. So that's the inside of that one cleaned wow. up too. There's a fair bit of cleaning. That's what that lever there is for, I think. It's to actually engage and move this gear up, which on this side, there must be the hydraulic like uh, motor that sits on the top it must uh, bolt on the top here and it goes into that spline 
which goes across and then when you hit that up it pushes that gear up and engages it and it spins along that you know what i mean yeah man so that's how that works and then we think that this is the actual handle for the hydraulic to, oh. to engage it and to move it and you you pull it around Oh, to the, di right. the direction that you want. It cuts yeah. the flow in the, in the direction. So we don't have the actual hydraulic like set to do this properly. We're just gonna probably just do just the manual turret lock because, you know, we only need to move it, you know, just in the museum a little bit. It's not like we're actually gonna be using it properly. In so, battle. In battle or yeah. anything like that, so. <laughs> Like that looks great. Wow. Put a little bit of grease on that. Yeah. Yeah, nice experience. Beautiful. See how that works? So hitting it all the way down allows you to do it manually. <laughs> it's spinning on the table because the gear is turning on the table. Oh, <laughs> That's why. Yeah, okay. Oh yeah, yeah, I see it, yeah. See the gear on the table? I'll turn it over so you can see it eventually. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, so that's essentially how it works. That's excellent, man. Wow. Pretty cool. So did that have like a like a cover over it, like a timber handle or something, or no, it's just brass. It's just a brass handle. Wow. Watch me put this bloody Stanley knife into my hand. Yeah. I have to go see Maddie. Maddie. <laughs> that looks great, man. Wow. Yeah. So what happens so when you lock that out? So you push it in and it engages so you can actually turn it oh. and you can pull it back and it locks it in place. Meanwhile, Daryl has been working on the 75mm main gun. It's a gorgeous piece and the boys have done a great job in cleaning it up. But here in Australia, we have to conform to very strict regulations when it comes to firearm deactivation. It was being hacked apart with, with, with oxygen, it was deactivated with the army. So we've just basically freed up a few of the bits and tidied it up and, and just put it back. It'll never fire, but we just like to have it, it's because it's in a museum piece, have it, have, it, have it on display and have it... You know, have it looking nice. Have it, have it looking nice, yeah. Okay, so. What we have here is, is what helps us a lot when we're doing these uh, types of things, because we haven't worked on them before, so the museum manager's got a really good uh, library of different books and that, and he has one on the M2 and the M3 75mm gun. That's the actual manual then? Like that's, a historical that's the actual manual. manual? October 8th, 1941, so that's perfect for what we're doing. On all the other breaches that we've worked on, on some of the German tanks, the breach block actually comes out from below. But on this one, it's got a threaded uh, recess in here for thread so I was wondering why that but then reading through the manual the actual breech block comes out from the top so just different ways different manufacturing yeah, and it okay. also explains how, how some of the parts go you've got these these parts here these are the uh, extractor plungers well you unscrew a thing and they're all rusted in there you don't know what you're going to get out but if you've got a picture of it it gives you an idea of what you're looking for and if you get all the parts out so as you can see these pieces here are these parts here and then everything's marked. Everything's got a number and everything's got a little ordnance mark. I'll just show you some of them. First thing to go in are the extractors. These are two extractors. They've got a recess in the, in the breech ring. They go into the recess and they go against the face of the, the barrel. Yeah. So you've got to ha have them up tight against the, the face of the, the breech itself. Up tight there, there's a little recess that they go into. Mm -hmm. And that's what actually pulls the shell casing out. Right. So the breech block just slides in, it took a bit to clean it up because a little bit of damage where it's all been oxy cut. Watch your, watch your hands. Yep. That's it. Yep. Alright, so that's sitting in there. Now what we've got to do now is you have to lower it fractionally to get the, the crank 
in at the bottom here. So we've got to take it off this. So to make sure this doesn't fall through, we'll just put a bridging piece across. That looks familiar. Yeah. Yeah. What we've got now is, is we've got the crank pin here. It goes through the um, the recourse, a type of recourse spring that actually closes, automatically closes the breech. And on the other side, it goes into the cocking arm. I probably, I'm not using the right technical terms, but we're not armourers. So it just comes back. So when it fires, this recoils back and recocks the gun. Hey. Okay. Go up a bit more, up a little bit more, keep going, yep, uh, a little bit more, yep, it's up there. Yes. Beautiful. That was so satisfying, <laughs> that was great. Like Hold yeah. on, let me check the one here. Like that. Yep. All right, yep, what's next? Well, what we have here is a, a arm with a thread on the end. It goes through this casing and it's got a, a linkage of chain here. So we, we lay that as flat as we can and get it as long as we can. And it should be poking out here. You can see it's got a thread on the end of it. So this is actually the recoil. When you drop the breech down, once the extractors come forward, this is what gives the pressure for the breech to rise up again, for the, to the lock to close. It keeps tension on it. Yeah. So Jess is going to put the spring in now. I'm going to try and keep this fairly straight. We practiced this and it worked. Oh my god, yeah, it's all like the way, hey. <laughs> Pressure on it, there you go. Try and hold that straight. This doesn't go forward anymore. Oh. I swear we had it out more last time. Oh. We're on. We're on. Daryl's big barrel. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, no Look at that. Good guess. Where's that lady at? Right, so, what, what's oh. happening now? I'll just, just tighten up this nut a bit. Because it allows for the tension. That, uh, the tighter it is, it'll spring back into place better. Right. We practiced this before and it, <laughs> it, it worked okay for what we want. Gotta remember, this has all been oxy cut, the breech has been oxy cut. So there's a few dags in that that get in the way. There's definitely a few dags here. Oh. So that spring keeps pressure on the base of the uh, extractors. It's in the closed position, should be ready to fire if we had a firing mechanism, but it's all been cut off and deactivated. But to cock it, to open the breech, you do it first manually, and this is the handle here. So this is a big, a big ratchet handle you pull down. So it should go down, and extractors should lock it in place. Wow. Right, cool. now, if you want to close it, you have to very carefully push these two extractors in, and that, because of the pressure on the spring, will automatically close the gun. Right. So they're going to do that. But if you want to load it, which we've got a shell case out of collection here, this is a little uh, howitzer case, but same same size case. So yep. we just uh, just will just push it in. Normally the gunner would would push it in with an upward motion with his hand, so they don't get it jammed in the breech. He'd slam it home. But we're just amateurs here, so we do it with a hammer. It's safer. Yep. So ready for this? Put that back in the position. Otherwise it flings back. So. Well, awesome. now, now technically it's ready to fire. So pretty much when you hit this, push this in, it fires it forward, which pushes this linkage across and flips this around. So if you watch here. Wow. Yeah, okay. And then that linkage Push would... In. Pushes this across. Yep. Firing ah. yep. And that releases the firing pin to shoot forward. <laughs> Are you ready? Then again. Extractors pull the case out enough so you can grab it and pull it out. Wow. Do you want to do it again? Yeah, let's yeah. do it, let's do it again. Gee, you wouldn't want your fingers in there, eh? No. <laughs> That's yeah. what we're using the hammer handle. Well, let's do it again. Yeah, another one. <laughs> we can do this all day. <laughs> right? 
tweed and eject the case. Awesome. Beautiful. Nice, fellas. Now for the turret ring. When we acquired this vehicle, it had only the original outer turret ring bolted down with no ball bearings or accompanying inner ring. Fortunately, in our storage facility, we had a complete one that we can easily fit. But before this can happen, the old one has to be removed. Jesse starts by cutting away the old nuts, then heating up the metal around the bolt. Hopefully then, he can punch them all the way through. Hopefully. Not looking good? It was looking so promising, but we got a bit overexcited and tried to undo one cold. And this broke the drill bit. This was a real pain because those bits are not held in stock in our town. So Jesse initiated plan B, welding nuts onto the bolt heads.
like the thread looks almost brand new. Yeah. It's crazy. But like you can see just at the top of the thread seat rusted. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's yeah. just been able to seat down just in the first few turns of thread. Oh no. Oh no. That's alright, it should still come off. Right on, Smoko. Pure bliss. Bliss. It's the state of Victoria. Well, it's great getting back into the swing of things. 2023 is gonna be a fantastic year for restorations and we cannot wait to share what we have coming up with you. That's all we have time for today. Tune in this Friday for a special episode on the Hummel self-propelled gun and next Wednesday for your weekly tank restoration fix. So until then, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour and I'll see you on the next one. Lock, lock it out. Oh no, you don't wanna. Oh. <laughs> Okay. <laughs>